Welcome everyone once again. Let's talk about urban planning. And this episode today is about figuring out what's better for a place, right? So having, on the one hand, having big companies come in, build things, or letting people live there, decide what happens. Okay? So I've invited Stefano Tornieri to tell us about you know, his research of a small town in Italy, comparing it to a huge power plant to see which way is better for the community and ultimately well, better for the planet. Stefano, welcome to our episode. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for the invitation, Rodrigo. Perfect. Stefano, you point out uh, in your article a lack of research on ordinary cities in Delta regions, okay, and like the extensive focus of the literature on larger urban centers. So that's what made you start this research? Well, uh, thank you for the question. It's uh, I always work uh, in, uh, in this kind of landscape, so wetlands, uh, rivers, deltas, uh, lagoons. I'm, I'm from uh, Venice. Um, but I have to say that I was starting to, to think about uh, uh, this contrast image. Uh, I don't know if you ever um, talk about... Uh, uh, like very contrasting image, let's say. Uh, for instance, I make an, an example, the famous picture of uh, uh, the dead kid refugees on, on, on the beach. And at the same time, if you see another image um, after a while uh, of a rich kid in, in Saudi Arabia driving uh, the uh, like a Lamborghini in the, in, in the desert, let's say. So these two strong uh, images compared makes you wonder about like inequalities, uh, makes you wonder about injustice uh, and stuff. It's, it's a way to communicate uh, a message in a powerful way, let's say, or in a different uh, different way. So I, I try to apply, let's say, the same, um, the same attitude, the same approach with, uh, with my discipline, it's uh, architecture and, uh, and urban planning. So uh I, that was a kind of starting point making a comparison uh, between as you were saying before like an ordinary uh development of a territory in this case it's the delta po um region so it's a very specific part of the the longest part of the longest uh, river in italy the, the po and uh, a big project that is uh, developing there which is the dismantling of a very important power plant that was uh, built there uh, in the past to develop, of course, the, the, the territory and to transform it into a, a luxury resort. So that was the starting uh, point of that. So you made this comparison, your this approach that you apply to uh, your research. What did you find? So what are the highlights of this comparison you did? Yeah, um, I forgot to say also what are uh, what was the um, the research gap, and then of course I will uh, go through uh, what I I found out. Um, so the, uh, it's interesting because this um, this territory has always historically they they have been developed through uh, through this double dimension. From one side the the landscape, the horizontal landscape, which is a vast uh, landscape made by ordinary objects like. Uh, small architecture, also uh, small technical um, uh, machines, let's say, you know, to, uh, they can help you to understand better the, the value of the system of this landscape. And on the other side, the monumentality of some buildings, some important uh, um, exceptions uh, in, into the landscape. Uh, Delta, uh, the Po Delta has been studied a lot, has been, there are very wide literature about that. Uh, but yeah, my um, my discover I was trying to understand how uh, and which is uh, which are let's say the most recent development uh, in this area. It has been studied, uh, I repeat, from the point of view of the landscape uh, uh, changing, like the climate change, from the point of view of the environmental crisis, uh, from the point of view of heritage. But now there are some projects that are ongoing, and in the specific this kind of luxury. Uh, resort facing towards like the development of the um, tourism. Uh, yeah, basically, basically uh, all of them are towards uh, development in the tourism uh, 
uh, in tourism. And these places, this landscape are maybe not only, <laughs> they can survive not only through uh, the tourism income or whatever. So I discovered that uh, there, there, is, uh, there are realities like the Massenzatica uh, Consortium uh, that is a completely different and opposite um, development and idea to live in that landscape. It's a consortium, it's a small group of people. I mean, some families that um, under the power or under the control of this consortium, they are sharing, sharing land, uh, the land, sharing the products of the land. So it's a agricultural activity that is shared between, uh, uh, between families. Uh, and it's a completely different approach from uh, the uh, the tourism and the massive uh, tourism uh, of the uh, the the luxury um, resort that is going to be built in, into this uh, old power plant. So the power plant is completely dismantled now, and um, so from the theoretical point of view, this is like. A, a very contrasting uh, uh, development in the same region, in the same area. So consider that these development strategies are um, are mostly in the same, uh, in, in only a few actors. So we can find these uh, realities in the in the same uh, in the same place. Um, then I criticize, I let's say, how this development uh, project uh, has been done. Uh, from the theoretical point of view, it's it's an argument because uh, Bernardo Secchi, for instance, the famous uh, urbanist, uh, analyzed the concept of the spread, you now the concept of uh, uh, spreading city. It's called the Città Diffusa, uh, which is not in that area. But I found out that I can say that a lot of um, uh, geometries, a lot of um, uh, principle that uh, helps you to understand the, the landscape and the territory are completely um, are, are the same, let's say. We, we, we can easily adapt the concept of the spread of the uh, Città Diffusa into, um, uh, into the Delta landscape. So from this point of view, exception and monumentally and uh, something that is extraordinary, uh, what I called into the uh, into the, my research, uh, they they are not uh, uh, working so well in this kind of uh, of landscape. So there are some crises, some uh, some arguments that I can say to to, to criticize, like the territorial uh, disconnectivity. So it's a it's like a perimeter, it's an enclosed perimeter that is disconnected somehow from the reality of the of the existing landscape. Seasonality and attractivity that are completely um, not constant during the year, so uh, unconstantly, and overimposition of something new into a, a well-recognized landscape over over time. Well, uh, this makes, this makes me think a little about um, well some lessons for well in first place policymakers maybe including the promotion of more community-centric development, uh, some sustain more looking at sustainable land use. So what are your takes on who could learn from these findings and what can they learn? Yeah, uh, of course, these landscape are mm, controlled, but let's say there are a lot of um, administration, a lot of entities, uh, uh, laws, administration, institutions, uh, uh, cooperatives, uh, a lot of en entities, public entities, but also private in interests that are overlapping to, into this uh, landscape. I, I think that the discussion uh, in terms of um, development of this uh, um, of this territory has to be implemented with a lot of other layers. Let's say normally private investment now, and uh, that was a. Uh, uh, one of the focal point of the of the paper is that um, they of course not looking to a wider scenario of the uh, of the area. They are uh, <clears throat> evaluating the uh, the positivity and the good mm, the good factors of the project based on the income, based on the uh, of course how they can uh, the business plan. Let's say uh, so. This contrast, of course, I, I would like to add uh, to the. Uh, to the discussion uh, with these critics, uh, I think that the the role of the 
the researcher has to be uh, this one, like to analyze and to be able to to find the, all the different point of the pieces of the puzzle and to try to um, to communicate uh, all these uh, uh, problems or uh, critics and 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 try to communicate to the most wider uh, uh, community as as possible. So I use this uh, I use this uh, technique of the contrast and how to be more effective in, uh, in the communication. Uh, and before we go, because you've been doing a lot of already uh, uh, analysis and critique, but before we jump into that and follow up on it, any hints of what future research should focus on? Well, um, yeah, I, I think that... Uh, I tried to. Um, uh, I moved from this. I mean, I started with this um, um, research that is about uh, landscape along rivers and specifically uh, in deltas uh, areas. And uh, I think that this kind of approach, this kind of methodologies, can be adapted in different. Uh, uh, in different contexts. Uh, uh, more in particular, I, I'm now uh, currently uh, studying communities, fishing communities along the rivers. I, I would say that it's the same uh, uh, situation in, in different countries uh, that I've studied, in Sweden and uh, Japan now, for instance, I found the same uh, contrast between like an ordinary, uh, that um, an ordinary um, uh, history or uh, an ordinary landscape that has been produced uh, along years, along centuries. So these fishing techniques, for instance, came from a long time ago. And now tourism, over tourism in some cases, or private investment or other um, recent uh, development projects are completely, let's say, uh, overcoming, overpass these uh, this, um, traditions or this uh, um, was this heritage, which is in certain cases like an intangible heritage. That's one of the, the questions that I want to, to highlight. Perfect. And so you've been doing throughout the, the whole episode, not only sharing um, some of the highlights of your study, but also already doing your reflection, your critiques, your on how this development project has been done, not working well in this kind of landscape. And you also mentioned the role of researchers uh, on this part. So let's follow up on that. What are your reflections after you conducted this study and after, as you clearly did, um, reflecting on the, of, on the findings of your study? Uh, yeah, I always start with... Uh... The idea of um, the deltas. Now, deltas again are, the, I think that they are the between the most uh, intriguing landscape uh, in the uh, on Earth. It's a dynamic landscape. It's um, a constant uh, uh, transforming uh, morphology. Let's say so. It of course it attracts also attracts investments because they are like uh, because of the location because of. Uh, uh, different uh, qualities that the landscape itself uh, has. So um, I think that we have to reconsider a little bit the our role as uh, as designer, as a uh, uh, scholar, as a um, person that can be uh, that can produce a different kind of scenario, which is not only based on uh, uh, on incomes or uh, effectivity on positivity into uh, into landscape, but try to, to to make it as a as an integral vision, so that's able to connect different layers of uh, of the complexity uh, of landscape. Yeah. Uh, as a challenge to close this episode, that I always ask um, all the speakers, if you had to sum up this episode in no more than two sentences, what would it be? Um. Yeah, you have always to uh, consider into the territory, into the development of territory through projects and through design, which are the long term consequences, not only to understand uh, which is the best uh, uh, solution for these years or this moment, but to consider a wide um, range of time and, uh, and layers of complexity. So. 
I think that one of the last sentences could be like, uh, ordinary maintenance makes better than extraordinary maintenance. So it's like a double, uh, um, these two words that uh, are important also in uh, in landscape development. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, no, straight to the point and actually sounds very good and good model. Uh, Stefano, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So for those who are watching us on YouTube, on the description of the video, you can find all the resources, all the materials of the conversation that I just had uh, with Stefan about the, the Delta of the Po River and also some more uh, resources on the Let's Talk About Urban Planning website and also links that can be uh, interesting for you to our newsletter. You can listen to it on our podcast platforms, follow us on Twitter, etc. And thank you all.